so welcome back. We're with Sean, one of my friends here in Ketchikan, and he is one of the best smokehouse uh, guys that I know. <laughs> I begged him and he let us come over and kind of film his process and his smokehouse and everything he does to get his fish uh, smoked up, which is one of the better ways to eat salmon in my opinion. Oh yeah. How long have you been smoking fish? Oh, since I was about 15 years old. Once I was allowed to try to do it myself by my father. Yeah. You know, it was awfully watchful about everything, but I'm yeah, sure. I've been doing it 40, 50 years. 25 years? Yeah, 25 <laughs> years. 25, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, so anyway, we we have the process that's old, homegrown, and, and that's what we do. And, smoke quite a bit of fish during the summer for people and ourselves and put it up and you know it's a it's a treat in the winter time for people when you mm -hmm. christmas time or whatever i usually do like 10 fillets of coho during christmas time and give it to people for christmas that's and perfect like that. so, gotta pull all the racks out okay get it ready to go I'm gonna do a little brushing of the racks well, actually, I bought this place from my father's estate, and, and uh, this is the second smokehouse. The first one burned down after about 20 years, but I've lived here for 30 and, well, 20 some. Anyway, uh, I haven't burned it down yet, thank goodness. But it's old fashioned school stuff, you know. We got. Uh, quite a bit in the freezer it needs to start getting done and fall's coming quick so but we'll do it you know I'll smoke fish five six times in the summer and then uh, do some stuff in the winter that we hold over for people and and then we'll do uh, like I do black cod for people when they got it, usually in the springtime, they get uh, creosote on them and build up and the guy needs to just scrape them a little bit, knock the chunks off. You know which racks the guy's gonna use. And just knocks off the so it off the racks. Otherwise, the fish, it'll drip the black creosote onto the oh. onto the fish, and it doesn't really hurt anything. It just looks like garbage. That'll probably be enough, I think. The uh, smokehouse is made out of spruce with cedar uh, batten board siding, shake roof, and inside the all the racks are spruce. Okay. Um, it, you usually put the fish up on the about the third rack up to start with, and then the heavier pieces on the top. Off to our fire making. How old is this one? Uh, this thing's about 30, maybe 35 years old. Wow. Yeah. I have some dry alder and some green alder. Get the dry alder in there, put the green stuff on the outside here. And then the, use the old briquettes from before essentially that can be saved it's real important to have the right draft 
close it down too far and we'll get and that green alder won't burn as well as you have too much that's why if you look at the smokehouse it's not exactly airtight <laughs> you know so it helps it draft as long as you can keep your fire from getting out of hand it usually works out pretty good so what happens is the dry alder will will burn real quick and you want the smoke not the fire as much you want to keep the temperature somewhere about 100 to 120 or so constant if you can it'll flare up on time to time and you'll have to shut it down sometimes i have to take some of the coals out to cool it off and put greener alder on top of it I smoke fish for people, you know, here and there, and do some trading. And black cod's really kind of the the one I like to smoke the best and trade with people on it. Smoke it for half or whatever. You think that's gonna go now? So we'll let that thing percolate. And the next thing to do is to come on yonder. So the fish I cut yesterday and salted and sugared it down yesterday and then put it in a cooler here with some ice in it to keep it keep it cool. So that's been salted and sugared, brown sugar and salt. Put the thin pieces on one rack and the thick pieces on the other. And if there are thick pieces then I tend to put those thicker pieces to the they run out of the thin pieces and I put the thicker pieces to the other side of the rack. So the salt firms it up? Is Somewhat, it yeah. The salt firms it up and it pushes some of the water out. That's why you see quite a bit of juice in there. Mm. What I do is I hand salt it with mild cure salt that I get from the cold storage. And then, um, then I sprinkle brown sugar on it. And... Uh, let it sit overnight for at least 12 hours. And, and then it's good to go. A lot of people air dry it for several hours um, until it gets kind of tacky. But they generally do a, a brine where they do use water and a, and a some salt and sugar solution that is real wet. And so they need to dry that stuff and get it kind of tacky, but this is already, you know, it's got some, some tackiness to it. If I see any excess salt or sugar or whatever that I don't like, I will wipe it off. But I, no, I don't, I don't rinse it off. It's, uh, it's already been rinsed before I do it, you know, so it's clean. Depending on what you do with it, um, I prefer sockeye jarred um, instead of just hard smoked. I kepper it and then then peel it off the skin while it's still about half cooked or less, just enough to skin to come off of it. And I prefer sockeye jarred or steelhead. But um, other than that, coho lasts longer than any fish. Really, even smoked. You'll be able to tell the difference on the pink from the coho. Uh, once it's smoked, it'll have a bit of a different color to it. Less brilliant, I guess you could say. So out at the marina, I get to sample a lot. A lot of people have dropped salmon off and they use all sorts of funky stuff to it. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about all that? I don't think much. I think that's a good way to ruin fish. Yeah. If you want to have that, you can just put that on there and fry it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Never have been real partial to all that salt and or the pepper and the chili pepper and garlic. Chili and, pepper and garlic all over it. Yeah. No, I'm too big of a fish snob, I guess, for that. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> so let me go check that fire real quick and okay. make sure I didn't go out. And, uh, this one's a little drier than the other stuff. split that up. I tend to like to keep the alder in the round, um, especially in the summertime. And this will get going pretty good now. Plus those coals are on there from that older stuff that I smoked before. So we want to let that burn down for at least half hour or so to clear out some of that uh, drier wood. Leave this open so that it drafts pretty well. Should go along pretty good now. Is that a beacon for everybody in town? To <laughs> the smoke? Yeah, a lot of friends. <laughs> See the garage door open and the smokehouse running and and uh, get off there and they're here. <laughs> well, they seem to know when it's done. Yeah. They're all pretty savvy guys. People come by, some of them get here a little too early and come back later. <laughs> <laughs> Taste is important, but what it looks like when it comes out is equally as important. Yeah. You freeze these. Better well, you're fishing a lot and you don't really have time to smoke. Yeah, we I freeze my fish whole. Uh, I gilled and gutted, mm -hmm. you know, bend. And then uh, do it later on in the fall when I got time if I'm really busy in the summer. So I've been knee deep in fish my whole life essentially. She's smoking now. <laughs> You should have seen the nice ones they pulled in yesterday. Nothing yesterday happened. morning. Oh yeah. Let's separate that out just a tad. Two hours after you close it all up. Uh, it takes a couple of hours just to get the heat up onto the fish to where you can see it's starting to work. You don't really see any color on the fish for about four hours, so. But I check it after the first hour, just on the fire, don't even look in the smokehouse. But right now you can see the, I've got a temperature gauge in here and it's, it's running uh, right at 110 or so. And that's kind of where I like to keep it for the first couple hours. So it's mm -hmm. just getting the smoke, it's getting, starting to firm up and doesn't get too hot. If it gets too hot, it'll bubble and you get oh, that yeah. yellow stuff that comes mm -hmm. out. All that is oil, but the heat creates it to be yellow and it doesn't look very You want to keep that in the fish. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start loading up the racks. Get eight, eight count. Yeah, so I can, I can actually reach up there. Most people can't. So. <laughs> We always start at the top because you don't want to knock black stuff onto the bottom layer when you're putting it in there. I put the thick pieces on the top and the thinner pieces on the bottom because the thick pieces will tend to bubble up faster because they've got, usually you have more oil in them.
What I find is most important is the ability to pull the fish up higher and get it away from the uh, get it away from the heat. Oh yeah. So the height of the smokehouse really makes a difference when you're smoking heavy king salmon. You know, you're gonna smoke it for like sometimes it takes me 15, 18 hours in the winter time. Wow. You have a lot of heat because it's real cold. It'll be you know 25 degrees right. out. So you, but you don't, that heat will still ruin the fish and It'll the fish will it. not get cooked enough. So huh. more of a cold smoke then really. Yeah. And the last one, the bellies. So time to close her up. My invented method of closing the door tight is a couple of pieces of wood. Brilliant, huh? Yeah. Closes that as tight as it can, but we still have cracks here that allow a lot of air ventilation with that heat that comes off the fire that helps. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of guys build new smokehouse and they put vents all over them. And, oh, yeah. You know, it does create more of a draw to a point, mm -hmm. but now you wait. Like I say, I'm going to check the fire in about an hour, make sure it's not too hot or 45 minutes, and just look at it. I can bank it down a little bit or pick okay. it up and then. I won't even open the doors for an hour and a half to look at the fish because I know okay. it's not going to get too hot in there Yeah. on that first hour and a half. And then after that, it's about every 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what you can see with your fire and how, okay. how much fire you've got and how hot it is out. And you just keep tendering it and you got to take the racks because sometimes the heat will run up one side and one side will get warm and mm -hmm. the back side will get hotter. You got to yeah. pull the racks out and then turn them around. And, stuff them back in so you get more of an even cook throughout the day nice so i'm thinking this is probably going to take six to seven hours today okay something like that well, we'll see here you really can't tell until you you know it's it's nothing scientific about it, it yeah you just don't know until you know after mm -hmm. about the first five or so hours you can tell where you're at you getting close how long it's going to be okay but i've had it where i thought it was going to be done and 10 hours and been there 14. And <laughs> it's always worth it when you come out with a finished product, mm -hmm. no matter what. It's been about two and a half hours, so the fish is, I think, going to be glazed and it'll be cooking. You know, now it's glazed up, so I got to watch it to make sure it doesn't get too hot. We'll open it up and I had to go ahead and add some wood a little while ago. It got a yeah. little warm, but uh, we'll see what the temp is. But should have to switch some racks around and look things over. Make sure it's not overcooking or undercooking. Oh yeah, so the temp has gotten up high too high actually, but uh, take these racks and look at them and nice. see they've, they've already got a glaze on them so they won't, now they'll just cook that way. Uh, that's looking good on that side. They get to be that color, that's what you want. And then it's just a matter of finishing them off with the light heat, keeping them away from the fire too much. And uh, get up here where we can get at stuff. Like this one can actually come down a little bit because it's not taking as much heat up there if you see the the difference in them oh yeah so it'll take a little more heat this one here it's in pretty good shape nice like that roll that around definitely tell the difference between the coho and the pinks yeah like right you, now colorization on on it's important this is that king salmon of Oh yeah, Ron Porter's that I've done, and it's it needs to be coming down just a little bit. 
it's in pretty good shape here. It's just a matter of tending the fire, keeping it low. Probably put one more little piece of wood on there to keep the fire down a little bit. Some of the greener wood, of course, that keeps the keeps it from flaring up too much. One day I might get a latch for that, but I don't think you should ever get a latch for that. <laughs> just wouldn't be right yeah so just keep that fire that uh, green wood keep a good smoke going on it and uh, how it, quickly will that cool down if you leave the door open or the it'll actually flare up a lot too much and then it'll oh you have to open the top up because it'll be too hot gotcha so well, yeah, the best thing to do is keep it tamped down as much as possible now. Hmm. Let that smoke and then check it if it gets overheated. Then just I just open the doors up for a while, let it cool off, and then shut them. Just leave it open for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Cools everything off. It does get huh. the fire going a little bit, but it's still cools everything off and okay. it's good to go. Awesome. So yeah. Hurry up and wait. Yeah, well. Wait for the prize. Wait for the, the good stuff to come out. Huh. But it's smoking just right. Perfect. And a lot of people use propane burner on it, but what happens is there's so much humidity in propane mm -hmm. when it burns. Yep. So they go with an electric base cooker and a big frying pan yeah. and chips, you know. But then you don't get the full roll smoke content yeah. out of it that way. So better if you just do the fire and tend it all the time if you've got mm -hmm. the time i usually take the whole day off and yeah just do it you know that's awesome when there's not much smoke but you can see just light smoke mm -hmm. and it gets gets kind of blue or whatever that it's getting way too hot okay you know you really you want that smoke like that and that tells you that it's not overheating in there yeah you know because you're using that green alder and it it's just smoldering essentially even though you've got a base of coals there, it takes a long time for that green alder to dry out enough to really catch fire and burn yeah. much. I can always cut an alder tree down. That's what all these are. So if I need an alder tree, I, I know where to pick them from. Yeah. Yeah, green is when you first cut it. The best time to cut alder is is when the leaves are down and the sap's down in it. But uh, the stuff that I got, um, that I cut up the other day was, was had, you know, summertime stuff, so. Best time to cut it is, is in the fall when the sap's down or the spring before it comes mm -hmm. up. So there's not as much sap in the wood. And uh, yeah, so. So I've heard, I've heard that the alder bark is better peeled off. What do you think about that? I don't bother with it. Doesn't matter. I never have. I've just gone ahead and used it the way it is. <laughs> You're a gentleman. Thank you. Yeah, so I don't, I've never really bothered too much with the bark. It doesn't seem to affect the... We're going to have a bunch of guests here. Yeah, look at you. How you doing? Bunch of buddies smelled the smokehouse, I guess. <laughs> yep, smoke, <laughs> it doesn't smoke take house much. on. And they, and they hands me a, a <laughs> sausage McMuffin <laughs> when I got smoked fish coming out. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it cool. takes a little while for the alder to, to season up where it's drier, it takes a couple of months. You know, if you if you don't cut it and you just leave it around, it takes a couple of months for it to dry up more than just straight up green alder that you just cut. Yeah. So hmm. if you can have that little bit of a mix to it so you can, if the fire gets down too low because it's too green, it doesn't burn well enough, you can always throw that one little chunk in there that's dry yeah. and it helps it flare up a little bit. You still have okay. the alder because otherwise you don't want to put hemlock or anything. No. You don't put anything in there but alder. Yeah. So. It's cool. Well, I'm excited for our next, next door opening. Yeah. And when we open the door again, it'll be, you know, I'll have to take some of it out earlier, but okay. we'll get it all out and set out and okay. take a viewing of it. All right. A little sooner than I thought, but coho is kind of dry, so it, it cooks kind of easier than a heavy oil fish. I moved the racks way up on top to 
avoid the heat. from the cool off so that I can deal with them. More of the good stuff. Ready? Got to kind of watch everything. That one came out pretty. Quite a bit of shrinkage when you end up with it. You might end start with 30 pounds and you'll end up with about 24. After the water content leaves it. I'm gonna like to take a paper towel and anything that you see that might be black on there. Every once in a while, the creosote will grip on it, but it'll wipe off the little stuff off of them. Take and lift them to make sure they come off the rack. Otherwise, when they cool, they'll stick to it. The skin will stick to the rack, even though you've oiled it. So you just kind of, while they're hot, you break that off there. If we had twice as much fish, we'd be having twice as much fun. I think we started with uh, about 65 pounds of fish, probably, and probably end up with about a total of 40, maybe five out of this. So the fish needs to actually set, so when you touch it, it doesn't. It's it's very soft now, and it, you don't want to break it or crack it open. If you were to grab this piece, it would, it's already broke open a little bit, but you can see the quality. It's not done too much. It's got lots of oil left in it, and uh, it's not dry. It's now or never. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Mm. So good. The end. <laughs> All right, so Sean's hard work has paid off. We finally uh, see the finished product and it's pretty exciting. We're going to vacuum pack them up and save them for this winter time when we're craving smoked salmon. Thanks for smoking today. You bet, you bet. It worked out great. Yeah, so if you like this uh, episode, subscribe and hit the like button. Give us some comments. Maybe you guys have recipes or you have questions that we can answer. Go ahead and put them down in the comments below and we'll get back to you. See you next time.